In this video, we will explore the intricate anatomy of the vestibulocochlear nerve. Start with a brief introduction to the vestibulocochlear nerve, setting the stage for our in-depth exploration. We'll then delve into a detailed description of its origin, tracing its roots in the brainstem, and examining its course and relationships with other cranial structures. Next, we'll explore the intricate details of its terminal branches. Following this, we'll dive into an analysis of its function in hearing and balance, linking these to relevant clinical correlations that highlight the nerve's importance in health and disease. Lastly, we'll conclude with key takeaways, summarizing the most critical points to ensure a comprehensive understanding of the vestibulocochlear nerve. The vestibulocochlear nerve, known as the eighth cranial nerve, is a unique component of the human nervous system. It stands distinctively as a purely sensory nerve, dedicated to transmitting specific types of sensory information to the brain. This nerve is intricately composed of two distinct branches, each with a specialized role. First, there is the vestibular nerve. This branch is integral to our sense of balance and spatial orientation. The second branch is the cochlear nerve. This branch is exclusively involved in our auditory system. Together, the vestibular and cochlear nerves form the vestibulocochlear nerve, a vital communication pathway that bridges our inner ear and our brain. This nerve plays a pivotal role not only in our ability to hear and respond to sounds, but also in maintaining our balance and spatial awareness. The vestibulocochlear nerve emerges distinctly from the brainstem at a critical junction point. Its apparent origin is at the level of the pontomedullary junction, where the pons and the medulla oblongata converge. Positioned just above the retroolivoy area, the vestibulocochlear nerve lies in a region rich in neural networks and pathways. This area, characterized by its proximity to the olivoid bodies, plays a vital role in the integration and relay of sensory and motor information. Furthermore, the vestibulocochlear nerve is anatomically situated laterally to the facial nerve. This proximity is noteworthy, as both nerves are closely associated in function and pathology. They often travel together through certain pathways, such as the internal acoustic meatus, making their relationship clinically significant. The actual origins of the vestibulocochlear nerve, pertaining to its two components, the vestibular and cochlear nerves, can be distinctly traced to specific nuclei within the brainstem. The vestibular part of the vestibulocochlear nerve originates from the vestibular nuclei, which are a group of four nuclei, medial, lateral, superior, and inferior. These nuclei are strategically situated in the brainstem, just below the lateral corners of the rhomboid fossa. The rhomboid fossa is part of the floor of the fourth ventricle, a cavity in the brain located between the brainstem and the cerebellum. Each of these vestibular nuclei plays a crucial role in processing sensory information related to balance and spatial orientation. On the other hand, the actual origin of the cochlear nerve is in the cochlear nuclei, which consist of two nuclei, the posterior and anterior cochlear nuclei. These nuclei are found just below the lateral recess of the fourth ventricle. The cochlear nuclei are the first relay stations in the central auditory pathway. They receive auditory information from the cochlea of the inner ear and are crucial in the initial processing and analysis of sound. From these nuclei, auditory signals are transmitted to higher centers in the brain, leading to the perception of sound. Within the posterior cranial fossa, particularly at the cerebellopontine angle, the vestibular and cochlear roots of the vestibulocochlear nerve quickly converge to form a single, unified nerve. This nerve constitutes the most lateral component of the acoustico-facial bundle, alongside other elements including the facial nerve, nervous intermedius, and the labyrinthine artery. As it traverses the cerebellopontine angle cistern, the vestibulocochlear nerve adopts a lateral and slightly anterosuperior trajectory. It courses superior to the petrooccipital fissure and the inferior petrosal sinus. This positioning is critical for its function and vulnerability to pathological conditions. Finally, the nerve exits the posterior cranial fossa through the internal acoustic meatus as a part of the acoustico-facial bundle. This passage marks its transition from the central nervous system to the peripheral pathways. Within the petrous part of the temporal bone, as the vestibulocochlear nerve travels through the internal acoustic canal, it divides again into its two components, the vestibular and cochlear roots. The cochlear nerve, responsible for hearing, occupies an anteromedial position within the canal. 
It specifically travels through the anteroinferior quadrant of the fundus, which is the most lateral part of the internal acoustic canal. It forms a superiorly concave groove in which the facial nerve rests. This nerve is situated anterosuperiorly. This close anatomical relationship is significant, especially in the context of surgical interventions or pathologies affecting the temporal bone, as it poses a risk for potential nerve damage or compression. Additionally, the labyrinthine vessels typically accompany the cochlear nerve in this region. On the other hand, the vestibular nerve, integral to balance and spatial orientation, is located posterolaterally within the internal acoustic canal. At the fundus of the canal, this nerve undergoes an important transformation as it expands to form the vestibular ganglion. This enlargement is a key feature in the nerve's anatomy, as the ganglion houses the cell bodies of the sensory neurons that transmit balance and spatial orientation information from the inner ear to the brain. The terminal branches of the vestibulocochlear nerve, consisting of the vestibular and cochlear nerves, have distinct and crucial roles in the sensory system. Let's delve into a detailed description of each nerve. The vestibular nerve, one of the terminal branches of the vestibulocochlear nerve, originates from the vestibular ganglion. This nerve is intricately divided into two main divisions, each responsible for conveying sensory information from different parts of the vestibular apparatus in the inner ear to the brain, aiding in balance and spatial orientation. The superior division of the vestibular nerve courses in the posterosuperior quadrant of the internal acoustic canal. It carries sensory fibers from the utricle and the hair cells of the superior and lateral semicircular canals. These structures are key in detecting angular movements of the head, providing crucial information for the maintenance of balance. The superior division further subdivides into several nerves, the utriculoampullary nerve, which itself divides into the utricular nerve and the anterior and lateral ampullary nerves. Occasionally, a superior saccular nerve may also be present, contributing to the intricate sensory network. On the other hand, the inferior division primarily comprises the saccular nerve and the posterior ampullary nerve. The saccular nerve is responsible for conveying sensory information from the saccule, another component of the vestibular apparatus that detects linear movements and head position relative to gravity. The posterior ampullary nerve services the posterior semicircular canal, which plays a role in detecting head movements in the sagittal plane. On the other hand, the cochlear nerve adopts a spiral course mirroring the cochlea's unique shape as it reaches the cochlea. This spiraling path leads the nerve towards the spiral ganglion, which is centrally located in the modiolus, the central pillar of the cochlea. The spiral ganglion is a key site where essential auditory processing occurs. It houses the cell bodies of the first-order neurons, which are directly connected to the hair cells of the organ of corti, the sensory organ of hearing. The hair cells are specialized receptors that convert mechanical sound vibrations into electrical signals. These signals are then transmitted to the spiral ganglion neurons. At the level of the spiral ganglion, a crucial synaptic exchange takes place. The first-order neurons, projecting from the hair cells, synapse with the second-order neurons of the cochlear nerve. This synapse is where the transformation of mechanical sound vibrations into neural impulses is completed, allowing these impulses to be transmitted to the brain. The vestibular nerve is essential for maintaining balance, a function that is pivotal for everyday activities and overall quality of life. As a key component of the vestibulocochlear nerve, it transmits sensory information from the inner ear's vestibular apparatus, which includes the semicircular canals and otolith organs, to the brain. This information is crucial for maintaining posture, coordinating head and eye movements, and perceiving spatial orientation. When there is impairment or dysfunction of the vestibular nerve, it can lead to a range of debilitating symptoms. One of the most common and pronounced of these symptoms is vertigo, characterized by a sensation of spinning or dizziness. Vertigo can be extremely disorienting and often impacts an individual's ability to perform basic tasks. It is not just a symptom but often a key indicator of vestibular nerve issues. Balance disorders are another significant consequence of vestibular nerve impairment. Individuals may experience difficulties with walking, standing, or maintaining stability, especially in environments that challenge their balance. Additionally, nystagmus, an involuntary, rapid movement of the eyes, often accompanies vestibular nerve disorders. As for the cochlear nerve, it plays a critical role in the sense of hear responsible for transmitting auditory information from the cochlea in the inner ear to the brain.
The hair cells in the cochlea convert sound vibrations into electrical impulses, which the cochlea nerve then relays to the auditory cortex of the brain. This process allows us to perceive and interpret a wide range of sounds, from speech to music, essential for communication and interaction with our environment. When there is impairment or damage to the cochlear nerve, it can lead to various auditory symptoms, most notably hearing loss. Hearing loss can range from mild to profound and may affect one or both ears. Another common symptom associated with cochlear nerve impairment is tinnitus, characterized by the perception of sound, such as ringing, buzzing, or whistling, in the absence of external auditory stimuli. Tinnitus can be continuous or intermittent and varies in severity. It can be a highly distressing condition, affecting concentration, sleep patterns, and overall quality of life. In conclusion, the vestibulocochlear nerve is an essential component of the human nervous system, playing a critical role in two fundamental sensory functions, hearing and balance. Here are the key takeaways about this vital nerve. The vestibulocochlear nerve is unique in its composition, consisting of two distinct parts, the cochlear nerve for hearing and the vestibular nerve for static and dynamic balance. This dual functionality is crucial for our daily interactions with the environment, enabling us to communicate effectively and maintain equilibrium. Impairments in the vestibulocochlear nerve can lead to significant clinical conditions. Damage to the cochlear nerve can result in hearing loss and tinnitus, profoundly affecting communication and quality of life. On the other hand, vestibular nerve dysfunction can cause vertigo, balance disorders, and nystagmus, impacting mobility and daily activities. Understanding the vestibulocochlear nerve's anatomy and function is vital for diagnosing and treating auditory and vestibular disorders. Advances in medical technology, such as cochlear implants for hearing loss and various rehabilitation therapies for balance disorders, demonstrate the importance of this knowledge in enhancing patient care. The vestibulocochlear nerve's interaction with other cranial nerves, particularly the facial nerve, and its close association with the labyrinthine artery highlight its integration within the broader neurological and vascular systems. This interconnectivity is essential for the coordinated functioning of sensory and motor responses. In essence, the vestibulocochlear nerve is a remarkable example of the complexity and precision of the human nervous system.